It wasn't that long ago that Tara Vanderveer landed the Ogo McKay sisters. Vern, you caught up with the former Stanford star today. Yeah, that's right, Dennis. Hey, we stick with the Stanford theme, inseparable with the Stanford Cardinal, and now in the WNBA, Shanae and Neka Ogumike. And in the case of Shanae, it doesn't matter whether she's carrying a basketball or a microphone. If the topic is the game, she's all in and more. How is it, not, how is it to have your uh, sister to watch her play for the first time this year? It is quite special, I must say. Without the sarcasm. Fun loving off the court but dominant on it. Neka and Shanae Ogumake left Stanford ranked number one and number three respectively on the school's all-time scoring list. Six Final Four appearances between them. However, the sisters never won an NCAA championship. Los Angeles Sparks select Demkadi Ogumake. Both were number one overall draft picks in the WNBA. And a year ago, Shanae was traded to the LA Sparks, where she reunited with her sister. Where COVID-19, it's really coming close to home. Shanae has a future in media once she retires from basketball. Mom, 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 like, Just time, this time weekend, she was together. a part of Yahoo Sports' We Keep Playing virtual forum. I spoke with her about it from her home in Houston. And that's to kind of send the message out to maybe some of the other elite athletes or even some of the younger athletes that, that are kind of so depressed, being cramped in, and just trying to figure out how in the world to handle this dynamic, especially those who have their seasons cut short. Yeah, I'm really glad to work with the Women's Sports Foundation. The first experience that I had there was just tremendous. I went for an award show because I believe Coach Tara got the Legends of Coaching Lifetime Type of Achievement Award there, and so I actually got to introduce her. That was the same day that my mentor, Dr. Condoleezza Rice, was there receiving an award as well. That's where I met Billie Jean King. So it was an amazing night for me in New York. And anytime the Women's Sports Foundation wants to gather a group of people, we all say yes. Speaking of New York and the huge list of panelists that are in this forum, one of them is Sabrina Inescu. And I couldn't help but notice we're about a week away from the WNBA draft. And she, of course, from the East Bay, she's going to go to the New York Liberty. She'll be the number one overall pick. And as one who was a number one overall pick in your own right, give us a sense of, boy, what kind of a whirlwind life she has been having and what she is about to get into. Yeah, I mean, this year she really has emerged as one of the leading voices for women's sports. And it's it's largely <clears throat> due to having Kobe, too. You know, Kobe was a big male ally for us and for her to have the ability to convey his importance to the world that was a moment but then also to back it up by her play i mean pac 12 player of the year their team oregon i mean you know i'm a part of stanford and we were sort of used to like running the pack back in my day but it's been really mm -hmm. nice to see so many different schools compete i mean i was looking one day and i was like whoa looking at the rankings because everyone's beating everybody but in the interim, everyone's in the top 25, like seven or so Pac-12 teams were in the top 25 and Oregon was definitely leading the charge. So she left her legacy in a tremendous way for women's basketball, for women's sports in general. And also I think Kobe helped bring that message to an even greater mainstream. So her transition, I'm not gonna lie, is gonna be abnormal because these are abnormal times. But regardless, like my, my draft day was probably my most I guess, memorable sports day I've ever experienced in my life just because of how surreal it was considering NECA, my older sister, also got drafted number one. You play for the L.A. Sparks. I mean, you, not only do you play in the arena where, where Kobe played, I mean, there, there's oftentimes, I would imagine, I don't know where you guys dress for games, but you might share the Laker locker room. And in fact, you have a great Kobe story going back from when you played at Stanford. Yeah, sure. So my, my freshman year, I was, uh, you know, playing in the Pac-10, not the Pac-12, the Pac-10. And that was the year that we actually, ho uh, we were hosts because we had the number one overall seed going into the tournament because we won the conference. And so we got to stay in the, you know, we, we played in Staples. And so we got to stay in the number one locker room, which was the Lakers locker room. And Coach Tara, the greatest of all time, the GOAT that she is, knew exactly which was Kobe's locker. So she put us on a scavenger hunt saying, do you guys know who's Kobe? Like, which one is Kobe's locker? So we all started running around trying to search and find <laughs> it. 
And we never found it. It got close to, you know, our shoot around time. So Coach Tar pointed it out. She's like, it's the only one with a lock on it, rightfully so, because he's a mega superstar, right? So I just told the team, I was like, y'all, you know, the young, crazy, naive freshman. I was like, hey guys, if we win the Pac-10 tournament, I'm gonna write a note and leave it in Kobe's locker. So I just ripped off a piece of paper from one of our nasty little scouting reports, a dirty corner after it's all used and abused, you know, from all the weekends, um, days of use and all that stuff. And so I wrote, dear Kobe, thank you so much for lending us your locker room. You know, pretty much like saying that, you know, we're the Stanford women's basketball team. We're huge fans of you and we appreciate all that you do. Sincerely, Stanford women's basketball and Chanae Ogumake. Kobe actually received the note, saw it in his locker, and reached out to a connection that the Lakers had um, through at Stanford, told that trainer to go directly to Coach Char and tell her the message of, congratulations on winning the tournament, strive for excellence in everything that you, uh, you guys do, we'll be rooting for you. Back to the LA Sparks and your, your, your sister NECA, she's a teammate, uh, you guys were together at Stanford, <laughs> no getting away from her, but, the, but what, what, is that, what, what has that been like to, to, to be together with, with, with family uh, almost all the time? I don't know if mm -hmm. you watch or have heard of the show Sister Sister, where they're nope. like sisters that are, you know, born like born together, but then put into separate households, and then eventually they make their way back to each other. Well, that's what happened. We got drafted to do two different teams, but but what people fail to realize is that while we were, you know, having our own separate journeys and paths, which NECA has assumed an amazing like you know responsibility and role as president of the WMBPA. She's a WNBA mm -hmm. champion, WNBA MVP, and then my path has sort of taken me different ways off the court, you know, with broadcasting. But now being back together, it's just we didn't realize how much we missed it. For me, you know, like it just worked out way better, you know, professionally because ESPN is right down like a couple blocks away, and I see my sister, so my life has really gotten better balance, and um, I will never ever take that for granted again. NBA analyst for ESPN and a baller at the same time. There's actually four Agumage sisters. Olivia played at Rice University, and Erica was Conference Player of the Year this season while playing for the Owls.